This is Algebra 2, Unit 6, Lesson 5, Factoring by Grouping. Now, we have already learned three different kinds of factoring. We have GCF, difference of squares, and the trinomial factoring, which is reverse FOIL. Now, you can combine those to completely factor things, but you can also factor a different way, which is called factoring by grouping. Now, most of the time, uh, when you do factoring by grouping, you do it with polynomials that are more than three terms, but you can do it on other ones as well. So let's look at how factoring by grouping works. Um, what we have to do is we have to look at a binomial as a factor. Now, if we look at the uh, expression here, x times 2x plus 1 plus 7 times 2x plus 1. x and 2x plus 1 are being multiplied here. 7 and 2x plus 1 are being multiplied here. We can treat the binomial 2x plus 1 as your greatest common factor and factor it out. So, if you factor out the 2x plus 1, you are left with x plus 7. So there it is, completely factored. Now, we could re multiply this through and um, then factor it by double bubbles, which would still work, but this is pretty quick if you recognize the structure of this. All right, so here we have 5x times x minus 2 minus 4 times x minus 2. We can look for a common binomial factor, treat the binomial as the GCF x minus 2 is the GCF of both of these. So if I take out the whole x minus 2, I am left with 5x minus 4. 5x minus 4. I divide out the x minus 2, divide out the x minus 2. All right, now you can also use this to um, work out other terms. What's your common binomial factor here? These two are being multiplied together. These two are being multiplied together. They're being added as a sum. So the common binomial factor is x minus 7. When I factor that out, I end up with x plus 5 plus x plus 1. Now these I can combine. Um, I can drop my parentheses x plus 5 plus x plus 1 and I end up with x minus 7 times 2x plus 6. And there we go. Now, actually, we could factor GCF out of this as well and just factor out a 2. So completely factored, this would be x minus 7 times 2 times x plus 3. And that's completely factored. So the factoring by grouping is basically looking at a greatest common factor when you do this. All right, what's your greatest common factor here? Well, your GCF would be the x plus 4. That's your binomial factor. Factor out the x plus 4. Be very, very careful of your signs when you do this next one. 2x plus 8 minus x minus 2. Close your parentheses. Now, the parentheses are important on this one. It wasn't so much on this one. Why is it important? Because of this minus. The minus has to carry through here. So x plus 4, 2x plus 8 minus x plus 2. So combining your terms we get 2x minus x is just x, and 8 plus 2 is 10. So x plus 4 times x plus 10. And that's what we end up with. All right, so why don't you try exercise 2. Write the expression of this as the equivalent product by binomials, and then test the equivalency with x equals 2. We'll do that one in class as a refresher so that we remember how to do the factoring by grouping. So let's move on to um, working out why this works. If we look at our polynomial expressions, some very special polynomials can be factored by taking advantage of the structure we have just seen. Um, so we want to keep the equations equivalent so that we can do it as an overall product. So let's look at this um, polynomial, 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x minus 15. Why can I make groups like this? Well, we have properties of commutative, associative, and distributive. Which one is changing the groups? It's associative. So this is the associative property. This is why it works. Now, when we go from this to this, what are we doing? We're taking out the GCF. And that's basically the GCF is using the distributive property. Using the distributive property backwards. You are taking out a greatest common factor. And then... <clears throat> 
you are taking out the x minus 3 as your GCF to get this, and you're using the distributive property again. So there is reasons why this works. It is applying the properties of the distributive property and the associative property when we're doing these kind of problems. The only difference is not only are you distributing, uh, uh, dividing out a single term, you're actually dividing out a, mon a binomial. All right, now when we factor by grouping, most of the time when you factor by grouping, you have a four-term or more polynomial usually. Um, that's when you usually see factoring by grouping. So when you do this, um, it's very simple process. You just have to make sure that you have a common binomial factor when you do this. So our first step is to group these in sets of two. Now this first one, I'm doing 3x cubed plus 2x squared. And then I'm going to do plus, and then I'm going to put the negative inside the parentheses. That way I don't accidentally lose it and forget it's part of the negative 27. Okay, so I have two groups. Note, like I said, I copy change changes to make this plus negative, so the negative goes inside the parentheses. All right, now our goal here is to have a common binomial factor. So what is the GCF of this first group? Well, the GCF isn't a number this time, it's a variable. And what's the biggest variable you can take out would be x squared. So I can factor out the x squared. When I factor out the x squared, divide it out, I'm left with 3x cubed divided by x squared is just 3x plus 2. Okay, so I want my common binomial factor here to end up being 3x plus 2. Well, notice this is negative 27x minus 18. Now, what is my GCF going to be? Uh, first of all, it's probably going to be 9. Um, but if I want this to be positive 3, I would have to factor out the negative as well. So I'm actually going to factor out negative 9. When I factor out negative 9, divide this by negative 9, I get 3x. And negative 18 divided by negative 9 is positive 2. So now I have my matching binomial factor, 3x plus 2, that I can take out. All right, and when I take it out, I'm left with x squared plus negative 9, which is really minus 9. Okay, am I done? Am I completely factored? Nope. 3x plus 2 is factored, but what about this? Isn't that difference of squares? Yes, it is. If you can factor difference of squares, factor difference of squares. If you can do any kind of factoring still, go ahead. 3x plus 2, x plus 3, times x minus 3. So you need to be able to recognize the patterns when you're having uh, different kinds of factoring. All right, let's try another one. We're going to group this one. 18x cubed plus 9x squared. I'm going to group that. And then I'm going to group plus negative 2x minus 1. All right, what is my GCF of this one? Be careful. The GCF is both a number and a variable. So your GCF is actually going to be 9x squared. When you divide this by 9x squared, you end up with 2x plus 9x squared divided by 9x squared is 1. Yes, you do need the 1 there. All right, now, how am I going to make this look like this? It doesn't look like it has a GCF. Well, it actually does. The GCF here will be negative 1. You can factor out a negative 1 because you want it to be positive 2 and positive 1. This is negative 2 and negative 1. So if I divide these by negative 1, I end up with 2x plus 1. So do I have a common binomial factor? Yes, I do. It's 2x plus 1 right here. If I factor out the 2x plus 1, I am left with 9x squared minus 1. Now, is that difference of squares? Yep, it is. 9x squared and 1 are both perfect squares. So that's going to be 3x plus 1 and 3x minus 1. And those are all completely factored. They can't be factored anymore. All right. Let's do the next one. x to the fifth plus 4x cubed plus 2x squared plus 8. All right. I'm going to group them two at a time. Oh, that's a really bad looking two. It's better. All right. What's my GCF here? All right, your GCF is going to be a variable. It's actually going to be x to the third. Factor that out. You're left with x squared plus 4 plus 
And what factors out of here is a 2? x squared plus 4. All right, so my common binomial factor is x squared plus 4. And that's going to come out. And then I multiply by x cubed plus 2. Okay, does this factor any more? Nope. This one kind of looks like it's difference of squares, but why isn't it? It isn't because it's plus. If it was minus, it would factor more. And x cubed plus 2 um, is not the sum of cubes because 2 is not a perfect cube. We'll talk about cubes in um, the ne uh, next lesson, I believe. Or we just talked about those. Mm -hmm. No, we talked about cubes in the last lesson. 2 is not a perfect cube, so that doesn't factor any farther. All right, let's leave D for you guys, and let's have you guys see if you can work that one out. All right, so if we are looking at this expression here, x squared plus ab minus ax minus bx. Now, we want to use grouping on it, but what do you notice about the first two terms? Do they have a greatest common factor? No, they don't. All right, and neither, uh, the second set of terms do, does, um, but the first one doesn't. So what we can do is we can rewrite it so that it does have a common term. Well, uh, we could put it with one of the ones that has an x on it. Well, let's um, rewrite it so it's x squared uh, minus ax plus ab minus bx. Now, why can I do that? Can I, why can I rearrange things in different order? That's the commutative property. Remember, the commutative property means when you change the order, when you add, you're not changing the value. Really, that's plus negative ax. So now you can group it like this and find the greatest common factor. So if one of your groups doesn't have a greatest common factor, see if you can rearrange the terms so that you can. Your GCF now here is x, and you factor out the x, you get x minus a, and this greatest common factor is going to be b times a minus x. Okay, now here's my question. Is x minus a and a minus x the same thing? No. This is positive x, this is negative x. This is negative a, this is positive a. What can we factor out to make this x minus a with the right signs? Well, if we factor out a negative 1, make that negative b, and that'll give me negative a plus x. And negative a plus x is actually x minus a. So now we have a common binomial factor of x minus a, which we can factor out, is x minus a times x minus b. And that is my equivalent product of binomials. There we go. So be very careful when you use factoring by grouping. Don't force the method when it does not apply. It can goof you up. All right, so here at exercise 6, there's an error. See if you can figure out what the error is, and uh, we'll go over in class um, in the next class.